Good morning, First Christian Church. Hosanna. Hosanna. <laughs> Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We are starting off our Holy Week together. We have been journeying uh, through Lent for 40-ish days together. And know that next Sunday we are celebrating Easter. A couple of other things to point out that is going on this week. On Thursday, we are celebrating Monday Thursday. That is when Jesus gathered with his disciples for the Last Supper, and we're having a service here at 6.30. And then on Friday, to remember Good Friday, we are going to be emailing you a meditation that will come to your inbox. We will still be having Discipleship Connection on Wednesday, but we will not be having a pickleball on Thursday. Will you please rise and join me in the call to worship? As the people welcome Jesus in Jerusalem with palms and shouting, commanding with love and humility, the reign of Jesus comes with peace and transformation. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest.
ourselves fully in your presence. God, as we worship, soften our hearts, slow our racing minds, and allow us to receive the gifts that you bring as we offer before you our praise. Hear the words of prayer that we bring in one voice together now, praying the words that Jesus taught us. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Finding your seat, I invite the children up front for children's moment with me. Okay, so last last week I asked if you had a donkey that I could borrow. Actually, one of you did say yes, and then the other one said no. So I brought some donkeys that you can uh, hold and think about. I, they're not mine. I borrowed them. So, yeah, so you can't keep one, but yes. So uh, we threw a parade for Jesus, and Jesus rides in on a what? On a donkey. It's, it's a borrowed donkey, right? This week marks the beginning of Holy Week. So since I have some of the older kids, let's, let's see if I can get their knowledge. Are we ready? Are we ready? So what happens on Thursday? Yeah, you gathered with his disciples for the Last Supper. Yeah, you know these things. You've had a good minister. Um, I pointed out in the last service how funny that guy's beard is. <laughs> I got a kickle. Okay, um, and then what happens on Friday? And crucified on what? On the cross. And um, he's crucified. Where is he? There it is. Yes, and he had to carry the cross. Up. Yeah, someone did help him. Yeah. And then he dies on the cross. And then they take his body and they wrap him up and they put him in what? A tomb. And he's there for how long? Yes. Three days later, who goes to check on him? Mary goes to check on him. And what does she find in the tomb? Nobody. Nothing. And it's that Jesus had risen, right? Look at y'all. You're so smart. You are. Then they have to go tell the disciples, and yeah, yeah, and they don't believe him at first. Yeah. There, someone named Thomas doubts him. He, does, he says, until I see the holes in my hands, now we're getting ahead of ourselves. But, good job. When we celebrate Holy Week, we're celebrating so much, and we're learning so much. And even though we know the stories, right? And y'all know the stories. Each and every year, we, know this, we read the stories so that we don't forget how important they are. Let's say a prayer. Dear God, thank you for being with us each and every day. Help us to follow you. Help us to make good decisions. Amen.
Now is the time in our service where we pray for what is going on in our world and in our lives each and every day. I do want to point to the prayer requests in your bulletin and name uh, our colleague, Reverend Chris Morton, who passed this last week on vacation. He is the regional minister for the Christian Church Disciples of Christ in Nebraska. And so we just lift up uh, his family and the people he serves in Nebraska. If you ever have any requests that you want to submit to your pastors or your prayer team, you can do that on our website. Let us go to God in prayer. Gracious and holy God, we say to you, Hosanna. We exclaim that blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. As Jesus journeyed to Jerusalem for Passover, we have journeyed in preparation in Lent, preparing our hearts and minds for acknowledging and remembering the sacred story of Jesus' death and resurrection. We acknowledge to you this morning the ways that we need to re be refocused on you, to be refocused on your love, to be refocused on your call and on your creation in the ways that you impact our lives. We celebrate your presence with us today. We celebrate our joys with you, but we know with a somber heart there is more we can hand over to you those who are struggling, those who are sick, lost, and lonely. We pray that we can open our arms to them. We can open our arms to your people and have a welcome like no other. We pray this and so much more in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus from 
Nazareth in Galilee. What's going on? Questions being posed, people yelling stuff, cutting down branches. Now, if you want to participate in this morning's sermon, I'm going to give you the opportunity to do it. I know that not everyone wants to do that. So I'm not going to like lay on like the public speaker, oh, come on, now you can do better than that. So opt in if you want to, opt out if you don't. I'm not going to make eye contact with anybody who chooses one way or the other. I will say, you can be back in. I was shocked at the level and vigor of participation in the first service. <laughs> Maybe that is my underestimation of y'all's desire to speak up for me this time. <laughs> we have some rebuttal we like y'all to do. So, uh, when you hear me say, coats and branches, your response then, should you so choose, Hosanna! So, I'm just trying to, young folk, don't, don't peer pressure anybody into doing this, okay? But if you want to, clear your throats and roll your shoulders back and ready to go. Because when I say coats and branches, Hosanna! All right, never mind, you want to do this. Okay. There is, there's chaos breaking loose in Jerusalem. The language that the Bible uses is turmoil by the time it's all said and done. Because while Jesus is making his entrance, and people are getting excited about him, and they've got their coats and their branches. Yeah. From the other side of town, though, is coming the political powerhouse. And there's these competing voices, these competing presences of who is involved, of who wants your attention. This competition of where we're going to give our allegiance, to whom we're going to offer our attention, who gets our devotion. And we hear these folks, and we see these folks as they're described, taking off coats and, and going out into the trees and branches, and, you know, kind of doing their thing of creating this, wow, oh, I'm really into it. Okay, so like creating this pathway, creating this pathway for Jesus to enter in. And they have this very tangible response. They use, like, tactical, like, real things to create this pathway for Jesus. It's not just an idea, it's an actual thing they do. With coats and branches. <laughs> so the model here, though, let's think about what these things do. I mean, you put on your coat, right? And, you know, if it's raining, you put on the rain coat. If it's cold, you put on the winter coat. Right? It serves like this helpful function. You kind of keep it warm, whatever. Uh, but it can also be sort of maybe protective. Conceal, kind of create some distance between some perceived threat and us. Branches do a similar thing, like, yeah, they cast shade and they're, they're places for trees to build their nests, and that's really good. And so there's some like nice parts that branches do for us, but you know, they also like can block our view. They can obstruct our, our vision. And so the model here uh, from the folks who are welcoming Jesus into town is to lay down what covers up and what obstructs. To lay down and to release in the presence of Jesus the things that we're using to conceal or protect, to keep something, someone at, at some kind of a distance. The welcome that they give to Jesus <clears throat> acknowledges those things releases those things and lay them down in his presence. Branches and coats. <laughs> now, I grew up in a neighborhood I did not belong in. Like, the Mitchells had no business lowering the real estate value of neighboring homes <laughs> on Grand Avenue. You know, it's a fancy part of town. In Keokaka, Iowa. It was an old, old river town. And this was the last road in town, as the town sort of moved out from Main Street, it was the last road that sat above the Mississippi River, high on a bluff, above the river, gorgeous setting, and it's where all of, like, years and years and years ago, where the rich, fancy power players in town built these beautiful, majestic homes 
in the scenery of the beauty and majesty of the Mississippi River. Like, the house directly across the street from the one I grew up in was built by Howard Hughes Sr. That was one of his big oil money uh, purchases was to build this home. He was from Missouri and his folks had moved to my hometown. And he built that home for his parents. Huge house. We didn't know. We were across the street. We weren't on the riverside. And they said it was a little cheaper over there. And, but the folks who lived on the riverside, they had work to do if they wanted to see the river. Because the bluff, albeit a bluff, it wasn't like a, a vacant cliff. It was a relatively gentle slope. You wouldn't want to fall down it, but it was gentle enough that there were lots of trees that grew on it. And so in order to see the river, you had to get out there and trim your branches. In order to catch a glimpse of the majesty in your proximity, you had to get out there and prune a little bit, cut some things back, so that you could see. So that you could get the glimpse of the majesty your proximity. Got to clear away sometimes the stuff that's obstructing our view of what's already right in front of us. And I think that's the model we see from these folks who are welcoming Jesus into their presence. Is a clearing away of the things that obstruct. A clearing away of the things that are, that are preventing them from fully experiencing the proximity and presence of Jesus. The things that we might be using to keep us at an arm's length to give us a sense of protection or a false sense of control. Their coats and their branches. <laughs> so what might we need to release? What do we need to cut down and lay down? What has become so like fully and overgrown, so overrepresented in our view, in our minds, in our spiritual experience, that we now have trouble making out the vision of Jesus in our proximity. That we have trouble fully seeing and appreciating the majesty that's already present in front of us. Because what has grown up, what we've wrapped around ourselves as some sense of protection has actually kept us at a distance. Or obstructed our view of allowing us to really see more tree than beauty, more branch than proximity to Jesus. What are those things that we've got to uh, trim back a little bit? Shed off a layer. Can be in the way that we understand ourselves. You know, can be in the way that we understand one another. Ideas that were maybe put into our head about people different than us from, you know, at an early age. You're not responsible for what you're taught when you're a kid, but it can stay. And so sometimes we've got to work to release those things so that we can better see the, the presence of the divine and God's majesty in the eyes and lives of people dissimilar from our own. We've got to be able to recognize that sometimes what we're being asked to do as a follower of Jesus, this is happening in the story this morning, uh, is, you know, and this is not a minor thing, that they are at odds with the other parade coming into town. And that the power structure and the political structure and the regime under which they live is at odds with the type of wide open love and expansive grace that Jesus came to. So sometimes that shedding of a layer, that cutting down of a branch, the things that we've got to release and lay down, the things that are obstructing our, are a question of our own allegiance, the question of our own sense of where God is calling. And how willing are we to step that direction? But if you've ever cut down branches, you ever trimmed a tree, or anybody had those bushes that just, like, they started out like cute in front of the house, Somebody else planted them, and now they're enormous, and they just be got like it. I have a pokey one, too. Like, you can't get close to it. It's, it's got its own defense mechanism. And so these hedges, like, are just out of control, and you've got to stay on top of them multiple times a year to just take over. You ever, like, trim a tree, or cut back a hedge, or have you ever cleaned out a closet? <laughs> and then you look around at the piles you've got, and you go, what am I supposed to do with this? Where am I supposed to put this? I've started out a day of spring 
degree skiing in my life, you know, 30, 40 degrees looks cold when you're looking at the forecast on your phone. But when the intensity of the mountain sun comes out and you're huffing and puffing from a day at altitude, you start to get a little toasty and you've got a shed layer. There are not just like coat racks in the middle of ski runs. What am I supposed to do with this? Where am I supposed to put it? I mean, we're familiar with that question. And if we're paying attention to the Hosanna shouting crowds, it wasn't just that they peeled off layers to lay somewhere. It wasn't just that they cut down branches to put in a pile. The, these things that they were doing, these tangible responses to the presence of Jesus, they were laying them down in the presence of Jesus. What they needed to lay down, they laid down before Jesus. And so for us, Palm Sunday really offers us a choice. To choose to believe that Jesus can sustain and carry what we cannot. To choose to believe that the things that are obstructing our view and experience of the majesty and the proximity of Jesus. To choose to believe the things that have just gotten too encumbering around us that we can't move enough to get to it. We've got to take it off and lay it somewhere. We have to choose to believe. It's just an invitation to a choice. To choose to believe that Jesus can sustain and carry that which we cannot. And it is a choice. Like, there's no like, good mathematical formulation. There's no scientific explanation. I mean, I can tell you all the stories of like the ridicule that Jesus received if he just kept chugging along. That he faced like the, prosec the prosecution and persecution that, that led to his death and crucifixion. And we know these things about Jesus, but that's Jesus doing that for Jesus. We have to just make the choice sometimes on faith to believe that Jesus can sustain and carry the weight, the challenge, the pain, and the things that we can no longer carry. So Palm Sunday invites us to the same type of choice that it invited those who were shattered those in. To choose to believe that the things encumbering us, the things that we need to shed off coats, and the things that we need to cut down branches, are things that we can lay at the feet of Jesus and trust that they will be received, to trust that we will be sustained <coughs> with the sustaining power of Jesus who leads us where we need to be held and carried. <clears throat> Everything we need, we're about to meet in the week to come. And this powerful story and its tangible sense in Holy Week began today. With coats, branches, <laughs> and, uh, and Friends, as we kind of entertain this idea of what we need to release and put down to be unencumbered by, we ready ourselves to, to share a meal of communion. The place where we find radical welcome of Jesus, the place that we have to do nothing to ready ourselves for, and trust that God has already done what needs to do through Jesus to meet us right here in the elements of bread and cup. We'll tell an ancient story of Jesus who offers himself to and for the world. And we receive that story in the taste of bread and cup. All are invited to receive this meal that is before us. And as we get ready to share in it, let's join our voices in our community. <laughs>
Loving God, as we gather on this Palm Sunday, we remember the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. Greeted with shouts of Hosanna, we recall the palms and garments spread before him, symbols of honor and praise. Yet we also remember the path he trod, the road that led to the cross. In the breaking of the bread and sharing of the cup, we are reminded of his ultimate act of love and sacrifice. May this communion nourish our spirits and renew our commitment to follow in his footsteps of our Lord. Grant us grace to embody his humility, to serve others with compassion, and to seek justice and peace in the world. As we partake of this bread and cup, may we be bound together as one body, united in faith and love. And may we go forth from this table empowered to live as faithful disciples, sharing the good news of your kingdom with all whom we meet. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Jesus was gathered with his disciples in an upper room. And from the table where they gathered, he took bread and blessed it and gave thanks for it. Breaking it was passed among those who were with him, that it would be received as his body broken. Similarly, he offered them the cup with blessing upon it that they would receive it as his blood shed. Spirit of that same Christ, our Savior, stands at this table, is among us, offering us to take a taste of those similar elements, to hear those same words of covenant and invitation. And so as we receive this meal of communion this morning, do so in the spirit of Christ among us, who calls us to life now and eternal. All are invited to receive what God has offered.
An interesting element of the week to come in the life of Jesus is that it relies on the gifts of other people for him to do and experience much of what we find out about his life. Today it is someone else's donkey. On Thursday it's somebody else's upstairs. Somebody else has prepared the room. When he's laid to rest after his crucifixion, it is somebody else's tomb. And a microcosm of the story of Holy Week is the partnership of the lives of regular folks seeking to follow in the way of Jesus, in the ministry of Jesus itself. There is an intersection of the things that we have that are used with the blessing of Jesus to magnify the love of God that he comes to make known. And so today, as we collect our offering, we trust that we are in a long line of faithful folks who have sought to use the possessions we have for the work of God through our faithful gifts. And so in this time of our service, we collect these tithes and offerings and trust that God works through them as they're gathered to one to be a part of this lineage of God making use of other people's stuff to glorify and magnify the name of Jesus. Jesus, our Savior and Redeemer, you have set the ultimate example of sacrificial love by giving your life for our salvation. We ask for grace to emulate your sacrificial love in our own lives. Grant us the capacity to give as a heartfelt act of worship and devotion to you. As we prepare to give our tithes and offerings, we pray, we pray that you will transform our hearts to become more like yours. We ask that you bless this offering and be with our church leadership so that we 
so that it may be used to further your teachings here on earth. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. As a community of faith, we have been journeying together to Holy Week for 40-ish days, and we are going to spend the next week together uh, praying, reflecting, and ultimately celebrating. If you would like to be a part of First Christian Church of McKinney, this is just one of the many journeys that we go on together each and every year. You can either contact Reverend Mitchell or myself so we can celebrate the next steps. And as next week is Easter, let us spend some time in reflection as who we might invite to join us with Easter next week. Let us continue to stand as we sing our closing hymn.